So this year I'm going to be speaking about the Active Directory migration tool for migrating users from and computers from one environment of Active Directory, let's say your Server 2000 Active Directory, over to Server 2008 R2. And this is very important because the support has ended for Server 2000. So we have a lot of organizations at this point that are looking to make this move and perhaps they're not aware of all of the different details involved in making a move like this. So in my case, I had an opportunity to work with a school system, a Seminole County school system here in Florida, and they had 65,000 users, computers, 65 domains, and they were shrinking all of this down to one domain uh, and moving over to Server 2008. And they didn't have the budget really for Quest migration tools or some other third-party tool. So the idea was, can we do this with the Active Directory migration tool? Anyone who's used that tool in the past would have said, no, absolutely not. And I was one of those people, actually, that said, I'm sorry, guys, we can't do it. But the tool has come a long way. And so we were able to do this, the whole school system, using this free tool from Microsoft. So that's what my session is about, um, being able to do the migration at a lower cost by using the tools that Microsoft provides. All right, so the big talk on the street right now is Office 365, but not in the way that you might think. Uh, most people are not talking about features and how great it is and what it's going to do. A lot of Exchange admins are predicting their own doom here because they're worried that this is going to cost them their jobs. Um, and it's understandable. If you move the infrastructure to the cloud and you move the administration of it, the backup recovery side to it, you know, all of that goes to the cloud and someone else is managing it, well, what do we need you for? Uh, so that is a concern for a lot of these exchange admins who perhaps they've been gods in their own world for a long time, certainly longer than typical admins. Remember back in the NT days, if you were an admin at all, you were a god. And, and that became lost along the way. And then exchange admins or database admins for SQL, they became you know, little mini gods. Now SharePoint has you know, their own little gods. But now with things going to the cloud, all these folks are sort of worried about where their future lies, really. So the dilemma there is uh, what does an exchange admin do if that's really going to be the case? And, and is that the case? Um, in talking with folks here and talking to some of the other exchange uh, MVPs, they're worried about this, but Microsoft's worried too. Microsoft is concerned that perhaps this isn't going to happen the way they're planning, because that's what they want. They want everybody to move to this Office 365, their, you know, which is the BPOS upgrade. But they're putting all of their eggs in this basket, and what if it doesn't happen? So Microsoft is worried, the Exchange admins are worried, and it may not happen as quickly as all of these Exchange admins are thinking. Um, it seems like there are many who are still holding off, and mainly that's because of first impressions. Um, the first impressions that BPOS has left uh, has people hesitant to trust all of their Exchange data to Office 365. So that was a negative first impression. But if they can turn that around in some way, if Microsoft can change that impression with decision makers, then, uh, then it might be a concern for Exchange admins that not necessarily that their job is at stake, but perhaps it's time to choose some new paths. Well, that's actually a good question because in harmony with the fact that Exchange admins maybe need to diversify what it is they, they work on, um, I've actually done that in my own life already, and uh, it's not something I typically get to teach about, though. So Microsoft has this unified messaging uh, side to Exchange, and a lot of folks have not had a chance to implement it, but I love it personally. And so there's unified messaging in Exchange, which gives you a universal inbox with voicemail and everything else going into your inbox. Well, beyond that, there's also unified communications, UC, which is the addition of Link Server, which used to be Office Communication Server, adding Link Server into the mix. And that has just been a nice addition to Exchange. I haven't had a chance to work with it yet. But in addition to that, there's UCC, Unified Communications and Collaboration. Now, a lot of folks don't realize this, but that includes SharePoint. And you might not think of SharePoint as being connected to Exchange at all, but see, it is connected if you look at it from unified communications and collaboration. So I'm a SharePoint administrator myself for various organizations that, uh, that I consult for. So what we're doing at TrainSignal is my Exchange track has pretty much come to an end. Uh, until there's new Exchange material released, perhaps Exchange 2014 or whatever it's going to be, 
Um, the time is now to focus on SharePoint and providing SharePoint training for IT pros. And so that's what I'm working on next. Um, an entire series on SharePoint administration and then SharePoint design and deployment. And so I'm pretty excited about it because um, for a long time I've been kind of pigeonholed into this exchange only world, but in reality I do a lot of other things. And so it's nice to be able to now take some of my SharePoint experience and bring that to the training table as well. And hopefully it'll make for a, a good series, a series that's not only able to help individuals to pass certification exams, but able to help them to really deploy a SharePoint server.